Last month, UN Women UK, a charity attached to the UN, quietly appointed activist and model Munro Bergdorf to serve as a champion for the Equal Rights Organisation, a face for the group. While UN Women UK aims to empower women and provide equal rights for all females across the globe, this move was met with serious backlash as Munro Bergdorf is a trans woman. This prompted 16 women activist groups in the UK to sign a letter condemning UN Women UK for giving the role to someone who they describe as not pro-women. Part of the letter read, if UN Women UK wants to select a women's ambassador, there is plenty of choice. To ignore all these pro-women activists in favour of a male advocating only for people like themselves seems like a deliberate message which many women in the UK and elsewhere will read as anti-female. But the criticism isn't just about the fact that Munro Bergdorf is transgender. She's also had a string of scandals attached to her name that prompted further questioning on why make her a champion for British women? Why not someone else? Joining me now to discuss this is Caroline Fist, director and co-founder of Conservatives for Women, one of the organisations who has signed this letter. Caroline, thank you so much for joining me today. First off, I want to ask, do you think it is suitable for a transgender woman to be in this position, to be a champion for UN Women UK? No, I, I don't think it's suitable. Um, so Munro is very high profile and active as being transgender. It's not a secret, therefore, that Munro is male. And so when there are 33 million women and girls in this country, it would be far more appropriate to choose a woman to represent women. Do you think it could be deemed as insulting to British women that none of them were chosen for this role? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say insulting. Again, just the basic point at this 33 million of us. Um, it's happening across the board. Um, males are taking women's positions, you know, in, in races. Um, so we're kind of seeing it happening more and more that there's a man standing in a place which was, hang on a second, that was an opportunity for women. So, yeah, women are insulted and annoyed that once again a male has taken a place which you would think appropriately should be given to a woman. Is it a high-profile role? Like, is it something that is good on your CV if you were to be appointed as a champion for UN Women UK? Yeah, well, OK, I would say it's not a high-profile role. I would imagine that, you know, sort of 66 million people in this country probably haven't heard of the role, pretty much. Yet, if you're the person who's got the role and then you're going out with it, of course, for you, it's extremely high profile and an amazing opportunity to be an activist and to push what you're interested in. And Munro is primarily a trans activist. I think that's a really important point. Um, you know, good for Munro. They're out promoting trans rights. So that sort of makes it doubly odd that they've been given this specific role, which should be focused on women and women's rights and women's opportunities. Mm. Do you think that, because well, you, you're obviously one of the, uh, there's 15 organisations mm. plus Conservatives for Women, mm -hmm. which you co-founded, have you had a lot of response from women that have looked at this and said, OK, that's not fair because there are so many amazing British women that could be appointed into a role like yeah. this? Yes, so the gender-critical uh, community in this country is growing and growing. There's tens of thousands of women who are very concerned about this issue. So like any situation where a man takes a woman's place, absolutely there's been a big backlash. And it's not just transport. Have you been seeing it in other areas of your research or work that yeah, the well, service I'm for women are doing? Sports in terms of like individuals taking slots is mm. the most high profile. What women women are much more concerned about the impact right across the board on women when like trans activism is saying that um, people like men identifying as women should be allowed to use women's bathrooms. Um, should be allowed into women's spaces and then should be allowed to take women's opportunities. So, for example, in the um, finance industry, there was a suggestion that when they're going for more women on boards, that should include trans women. Now, I haven't seen an example of that actually happening, but again, women were very annoyed that you know, we're finally, hopefully, getting more very senior position on boards at senior levels in companies. Already the implication is placed in there that that should include trans-identifying men. Mm -hmm. So women are extremely extremely annoyed about that. But in terms of high profile individuals occupying spaces, it is, I would say, largely in sport where you can see individuals taking those places. 
Going back to Munro Bergdorf individually, she has had this string of scandals attached to her name, regardless of whether yeah. she's transgender or whatever she identifies as, doesn't matter. She has had a few things that have, you know, a kind of put a bad light around her. Yeah. Can you explain to me what else has happened? Well, I mean, so firstly, that's a great example of why Munro, we would suggest, is not a good role model. And so therefore you have to say, well, why did they get the role? And you have to assume it's because they're a high-profile trans activist. Because the scandals have been, well, there's been quite a bit about race. Uh, Munro has suggested that the white, white race is the most racist and violent race. I mean, that's racism yeah. to suggest the white race is more violent and racist than other races. I mean, you can't kind of get around that. And it's it's an assertion unbacked by any facts or evidence. So you've kind of like, how does this person get this role? Well, she was dropped from L'Oreal right. for a string yes. of messages that she yeah. wrote. It's mostly, I think, they were about race. There were some other things mm. which were dragged up from social media, like kind of well, Twitter archaeology. And she had to step yeah. down as a, yeah. a, a adv advisor for the Labor Party, which kind of does beg the question, if you're, you know, heading up someone to take on a big position, a mm. prominent position for women, a bit of background checking doesn't go astray and anyone yeah. in, a, in a PR the PR department would be looking into this. So Munro tends to get dropped from roles when people have investigated some of the kind of, you know, pretty offensive things that they've said. Mm. So you kind of think, what is the UN women doing? And so for a lot of women, it does feel like deliberate trolling. Mm. Um, well, do you consider it more of a political stunt that this is UN Women UK kind of yielding to the to the left, trying to kind of say, well, we're doing something good, which is, you know, yeah. they're doing something good regardless by, yeah. by doing work for women, by okay, pushing so equality. I would say they're not yielding to the left. They're completely captured by the left. So UN Women really does push this agenda. They tweet out, trans women are women. Um, they've even said trans lesbians are lesbians. Now, if trans women are women, full stop, no ifs, no buts, that means that, you know, without any kind of checks or balances, identify as, a, for a man to identify as a woman, and then they can go into women's bathrooms, into women's safe spaces, apply for women's positions. No checks, no balances. Um, obviously, women find this offensive and potentially dangerous. Mm. Well, we're heading into a UK election this year mm -hmm. and a US election, but primarily on the ground here in the UK, do you think that this will become a big political issue going forward for a lot of parents, as we spoke about? Yeah, I mean... For, well, women that have had their eyes open to this issue think it should be the biggest political issue. Uh, I think there's a lot of people who are still not aware of it, but there's a huge amount of activism from women now who are very angry about this issue. It's not just about women's rights, it's also about children's safeguarding. So, yeah, there's tens of thousands of us who want to make it an election issue and we'll be out asking all MPs, you know, or all potential MPs, what's your position on this? And we'll be asking them, what is your definition of a woman? Mm. Has UN Women UK responded to your letter? No, not that I'm aware of. Have you... What exactly are you asking of them in the letter? Obviously, you've condemned the actual action of mm -hmm. hiring Munro into that position, but what do you want them to do? OK, what we would love them to do is to appoint a woman and um, ideally a gender-critical woman who is prepared to fight for women's rights. Mm. On the subject of UN women in general, the entire arm, which is obviously mm. a part of the UN, they've been under the spotlight as of late in response to the Israel-Hamas war mm -hmm. because they were failing to condemn Hamas as a terrorist organisation, especially with the brutality that was being inflicted on Israeli women. Now, Munro has obviously been a big spokeswoman for pro-Palestine content on her social media. What do you think this kind of says about UN women in general? If, first of all, she, they've hired a transgender person that has obviously caused backlash within the community, but it's also hiring someone that actively goes out of their way to promote pro-Palestinian posts on their social media despite their organisation already under the microscope for doing that. I mean, it's sort of hard to respond. It's, you know, we all saw what happened on October the 7th. Women and girls were brutally raped, um, shot, killed, murdered, what can I say? Um, so it's highly offensive. I can't really say much more than that, but it's highly offensive. Just finally, Caroline, do you think that this is a bit of a silent issue for a lot of women that haven't been able to speak up just for... Fa for 
for fear that it, yeah. they will be, you know, condemned by other women or other people on the, the left so or the woke. Stonewall and other organisations like Stonewall that promote trans ideology have been very effective in kind of capturing the mood in all the major organisations across this country. So women in workplaces right across the country are scared of raising their voices, challenging this ideology. Um, so there's lots of people who are silent on it, but we know how they feel. They follow our organisations. A lot of them are anonymous on Twitter. So I would say we're becoming a silent majority mm. and we're becoming more and more vocal. What do you think the state of feminism is at right now? Uh, I would say, so I'm traditionally a conservative. I wasn't really so much involved in the feminist movement, but I think there's a really resurgent feminist movement and it's much more cross-party now. So I think you can say you've got conservative feminists, left-wing feminists, and we're all fighting for women's rights. And we're actually very interested in the issue of safeguarding our girls. Mm. Um, the most vulnerable of our girls, autistic spectrum girls, girls with problems are the most likely to think, well, actually, maybe I really am a boy inside mm -hmm. and to go down a route of ir irreversible harm. So we're fighting for our rights, but we're also fighting for our children. Mm. Caroline Fist, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much.